television station in Nashville. I'm Kathy. Today in the kitchen, I'm going to be making sandwiches with whole grain bread because sandwiches are a real good healthy meal depending on what kind of bread you use and what you put in between them. And they can be made into real gourmet entrees or just something real quick to brown bag. And speaking of real quick, let's go into the kitchen and let's before, <laughs> hope we can catch my 15-year-old son before he leaves. He's making his favorite right here. Uh. Hi, Jim. This is Chibi, my 15-year-old son. And he's a growing boy, so he eats big snacks. <laughs> Tell us what you've got here already. Well, um, just some butter and uh, mayonnaise and mustard, the uh, bread. Eggless mayonnaise, right? Yeah, always. <laughs> okay. And then uh, just take about half an avocado and stick it on one side of the bread. Okay, this is a special sandwich to be made, makes all the time. And he told me one time, he said, you've got to try one of these and you'll fall in love. <laughs> and they're really good. Okay, now what's this? Then just take a pretty good sized slice of uh, tofu, about a half inch thick of sliced tofu, and kind of press it out onto the bread. And just take a little bit of soy sauce, enough to cover the top of the tofu, and just... Uh, for flavoring. Huh? All right, just a little bit. And then uh, take about oh, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast and just sprinkle it on top of there. He likes yeast. <laughs> Get yourself some sprouts. A lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's where I all like our food sprouts. goes. <laughs> and then just... Uh, they're smoothing that out a little bit. And you're done. And slap it this together. This is his real quick after-school snack. Now, of course, tofu is a real good source of protein, and we end up buying, we buy a five-gallon can because there's so many of us, and we have so many growing boys here. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go ahead and finish that one, too? You're eating two for a snack? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay. Well, let me show you this bread, too. We're using a, a commercial bread that we buy. I usually go and buy these whole grain breads at a day-old bakery and try and get maybe 10 or 12 loaves at a time and then stick them in the freezer. They're a lot cheaper that way. But if you're buying whole grain bread that's made commercially, be sure to read the labels because sometimes they do stick bleached or unbleached white flour in there. Okay, I'll leave you to finish that and have your snack. And let me show you a real kind of gourmet sandwich that you can make that is really a meal for two or three people. And this is something that I call a salad witch because it's like a giant salad inside of the sandwich. I'm using a whole grain French bread loaf, this one here. And just split it in half lengthwise. And of course, if you can't find whole grain bread in a French loaf shape, then you might want to make your own at home. It's really worth it to go through a little bit of extra trouble to get whole grains into your diet instead of the white grains. Now what I'm doing here is spreading the bottom half with a vinaigrette dressing 
This is just a homemade version. It's olive oil, a little bit of nutritional yeast, and some vinegar, and asafoetida. But you can use your favorite vinaigrette, and that would be fine. And then the top gets spread with mustard. So you get two different flavors when you bite into the sandwich on the bread itself. Okay. We've got the mustard here. And to add a little more flavoring, I'm going to sprinkle this with oregano across the top. And for those of you who like a little bit of hot, spicy, zesty foods, like a lot of people in our family do, I'm going to sprinkle this with red pepper flakes. Not the cayenne pepper that's ground up, but the large seeds. And then this is ready to be filled. Now the filling for this can be varied. You can use any different kind of vegetable that you have, but this is just a general idea. <clears throat> layer the bottom, start building from the bottom up. Make a layer of nice, fresh lettuce leaves. Now I look for the darker lettuce leaves because usually they have a little more nutrition in them than the real whiter breeds. Now we'll top the layer of lettuce leaves with a layer of cheese. And I always try to get the cheeses that are sold in natural food stores that are curdled without rennet. They're called rennetless cheeses. Um, rennet is actually the stomach enzyme from a baby calf. And that's what a lot of cheese manufacturers used to curdle the milk in their cheeses. But because we don't like to um, eat products that require slaughtering an animal, we try to get rennetless cheeses. And there are some really nice raw milk cheeses out that are made without rennet. Also, there are a lot of low-fat hard cheeses coming out on the market now that are made with skim milk because there's such a demand for low-fat foods nowadays. Okay, now we are going to top our cheese layer with a layer of sliced tomatoes. <laughs> this, this sandwich gets really tall after a while, and it's one of those that you wonder how you're going to get your mouth around. And if you want, you can add a layer of sprouts. I'm not going to spread them quite as thick as Chimelo spread his. Although it's a good idea to spread your sprouts out thickly because they're good for you. Sprouts are a good, fresh, organic vegetable that you can grow right in your own kitchen. And if you grow your own, they cost you about one-eighth the cost of the sprouts if you bought them in the store. Okay, now I've got a sprout layer, and this gets topped off with another kind of a salad. This is like a salad in itself, but I'm going to top this off with an antipasta salad, which is leftover from another night. And to make an antipasta salad, you just take lightly steamed vegetables. Here I've got some mushroom and bell pepper and carrots, but you can use any vegetable. You can use cauliflower or broccoli. And then you just take those vegetables and Soak them in a light vinaigrette that you can make with olive oil and either lemon juice or light vinegar. And then, of course, you can flavor that vinaigrette according to your taste. You can add either a few cloves of garlic to the oil or I think I better just use my fingers on this. Fingers sometimes when you're building sandwiches are the best tool. Anyways, you can flavor it according to your taste buds. You can use a few cloves of garlic in the oil, or I always use asafoetida to avoid the after the meal odor on the breath. And you can use a lot of black pepper if you want, or cayenne peppers. Just flavor the vinaigrettes differently. And this is a good kind of a salad to make out of any leftover vegetables, if you have any leftover, either lightly steamed or even sauteed vegetables, you can just keep a little jar in the refrigerator of vinaigrette 
and put your leftover vegetables into that. Okay, here we go. We've got a layer that's fairly good of the vinaigrette. And then we'll top this off with marinated artichoke hearts. And you can see this is <laughs> this sandwich is really growing. And of course, you don't have to stick to just these vegetables that I'm using here. Just use your imagination and go according to what's either growing in your backyard garden or what's available and in season in the grocery store. Because buying whatever vegetables are in season ends up being a lot easier on your food budget. And then we'll top this off with some sliced olives. Like this. Now, obviously, this is a, <laughs> a sandwich that you're going to want to serve with forks and knives. There we go. And then, <laughs> that's all, not quite the end of it. We're going to sprinkle, I'm going to sprinkle some nutritional yeast on this today. But you can use Parmesan cheese in this place. It, both of them add a nice flavor to the sandwich. Of course, you all know what Parmesan cheese tastes like. And I like to use Parmesan cheese because of all the cheeses, it's the lowest in cholesterol and saturated fat. But today, because I've used a hard cheese in the body of the sandwich, I'm going to sprinkle nutritional yeast on. Just get a good solid layer on top of all the vegetables. And this adds protein without any fat. It also adds a lot of the B vitamins and iron and many other essential minerals. And then top this off the best you can. <laughs> now, it's a good idea if you're making this kind of sandwich if you want to take little kebab sticks and run them through the sandwich this way at different intervals and then cut it open. Now this sandwich can be cut into either thirds or halves to make a whole serving. And you just take this and serve it just like this. And like I mentioned before, whoops. <laughs> You probably want to serve this with a fork and knife. And you can make a simple sandwich even more gourmet appearing simply by dressing it. I'll stick this together with a little kebab and dress the bowl up like this. There. And that looks a lot more appetizing and fancier. Hey, I'll trade you, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Think you can eat it? <laughs> nice. Now let me show you another bread that you can make at home. This is a bread that you may have trouble finding in a grocery store, but it's a really healthy bread for you. It's an unleavened bread, and it's made with wheat berry sprouts. These are sprouted wheat berries that have been slightly germinated. I think I've shown these to you before, but you can look at them. This is about how long they should be germinated, just so they get little teeny white tips on them, and just the very beginning of a root. And when they reach this stage, the starches inside of the berry itself turn to natural sugars. So this is a bread you don't have to add any kind of sweetener to at all. My children really like to make these breads. We just run them through hand grinders. And of course, if you have an electric food grinder at home, you can do it through that. But see, as I'm grinding, if you look closely, as this comes out, you can see there's a lot of the natural fiber or the bran just intermingled everywhere there. And you just run enough of this through to make a loaf. And you can vary your loaf sizes. This should be just about enough. It's such a simple bread to make. Just take your wheat, sprouted wheat berries, and at this point, you can either pat it into a loaf shape, much like this, or whatever shape you want, or you can add other things to them. 
At this point, you can toss in any kind of dried fruit or nut. You can make really delicious fruit cakes out of this kind of bread by putting in a lot of different kinds of dried fruits and different kinds of nuts. I've got here a, a date bread. You can't really see the dates here, but once you open it up, these have nice pitted dates in them. Or you can even vary the different kinds of grains that you sprout. But anyways, the idea is that after you have mixed it together, just form it into a loaf shape and then put this out in the sun. If you live in a sunny place and there's not going to be any rain, just put it out in the sun for a day. Either that, or you can bake it in your oven at about 250 degrees for about eight hours. Just put your oven on real low, either 200 or 250, and leave it out to bake. And you'll end up with a loaf that looks like this. Now remember, it doesn't rise, but you'll be surprised at how sweet this loaf is and just the interesting texture that it is. It's not too heavy, or I don't think it is, because the fiber, the natural fiber that's in there that isn't ground up too badly kind of keeps everything a little bit airy. And this makes a really good meal or snack as it's on its own or spread with some kind of a nut butter and possibly an unsweetened fruit preserve or a honey sweetened one. And then I always like to spread this or top this combination off with a little bit of bee pollen like this. One way that you can make a very filling, protein-rich sandwich filling is by using a new soybean product, at least it's new to us in the West, called tempeh. Actually, tempeh has been used in Indonesia for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, and it's basically a pre-digested protein. There are whole soybeans that are slightly cracked, and then they're cultured with a bacteria culture that breaks the protein down a bit and makes it more digestible to us. Now these make a really good protein center for a sandwich and they can be used in a lot of different ways. One really easy and quick way is to make a marinade sauce like the one I have here. Now this sauce is made with one cup of water, two vegetable bouillon cubes, two cups of tomato sauce, a quarter cup of safflower oil, two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of prepared mustard, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of asafoetida or one clove of, of crushed garlic, one teaspoon of white pepper, one eighth to one half a teaspoon of Tabasco sauce. Now all those ingredients take no time at all to mix together. And after they're mixed together, just bring them to a boil put your tempeh cutlets into the sauce, and then turn the heat down and let this whole thing simmer for about an hour. And then after it's simmered, and the sauce has cooked into the beans nicely, as you can see here, the color change is quite different once the sauce cooks into the beans. Then just lay these patties on the bottom of a baking dish that's been oiled and bake this in the oven at 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. So even though there is a long lapse of time before, from the time you mix your sauce together to the time you can actually serve this, it really doesn't take any of your time at all because it's just simmering time and baking time and you can do other things. So this is a very quick and easy cutlet to put between sandwiches. Now let me show you some burgers that you can make with tempeh also. But these are a little more work, but they're worth the trouble. They're made with two cups of finely chopped celery, a quarter cup of asafoetida or two cups of chopped onions, two teaspoons of black pepper, two pounds of tempeh crumbled, five cups of TVP, 
a quarter cup of soy sauce, one cup of whole wheat flour, one cup of nutritional yeast, four cups of whole grain breadcrumbs, one cup of walnut meal, three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, and two pounds of mashed tofu. And that gets all mixed together just into a mash like this. The one ingredient I kind of saved aside to show you, of course, is tofu, which is another soy byproduct. It's more like the texture of cottage cheese. And also this, this is TVP. This is also a soybean byproduct. Now this TVP has been soaked in some hot water and it gets nice and soft, kind of the texture of a, a tough hamburger. But it comes in this form. You buy it in a grocery store or natural food store in this form. It's like a very hard, dry biscuit. Then all these ingredients just get mixed together and then they're ready to cook. Now, hands are probably the best tool for mixing this around and also making the patties. When the mixture is totally mixed, just take a little half cup measure or so and make patties that are about half, have half a cup of this mixture. So form it into like a hamburger sized patty and then deep fry it in some heated oil. And this doesn't deep fry for very long, just for a few minutes. Now this particular recipe makes a lot of patties. This will make about 28 patties. But if you're cooking for either a very large family or a small group of friends, you'll find that these, this one recipe probably will be just about right. And even if it isn't, that's all right too because after these patties are cooked, they need to be frozen. So it's like an instant frozen food that you can have on hand to pull from your freezer whenever you need it. We're going to let these patties cook and deep fry until they're brown on both sides. Now it doesn't take very long, just like this. The oil was very hot, it was about 400, 375 or 400 degrees. When they're this golden, they get it dropped into a sauce. And I'm using today a teriyaki sauce that's made with one and a half cups of soy sauce, three tablespoons of asafoetida, three tablespoons of vinegar, two tablespoons of honey, and a quarter pound of fresh ginger root. Of course, you can just make some watered down soy sauce if you don't want this teriyaki ginger flavored sauce. And just dip the burgers in real quickly like this, just a second after they're fried just so they absorb a tiny bit of the sauce, and then set them on a platter. Now what you want to do is stack these with a little bit of saran wrap or wax paper between them and put them in the freezer. And these can be bagged up and frozen, but the main thing is to freeze these and allow them to freeze, freeze solid. You can freeze them for a day or two days even, or even up to a month, and then it's time to cook them. The freezing is very crucial to the texture of these burgers because it helps to toughen up the tofu. When it's time to cook them, just put them on an outdoor grill or an indoor one. You can get a little portable one like this and brush the tops and the bottoms with a little bit of melted margarine or butter. And then allow them to cook. I'm going to flip these over and brush the other side. And while these are cooking, why don't we look at the other sandwiches that we've made today. If you remember, at the very beginning, my oldest son made his special sandwich, the Growing Boys Special, that's made with whole grains and tofu and avocados and lots of nice sprouts. And then I made the whole salad inside of a sandwich, the san salad witch, that can be dressed up properly for a gourmet meal. And then, of course, the more filling tempeh filet. And now I'm making the tempeh burgers. And when the burgers get grilled on one side, you just flip them over to grill on the other side. As you can see, they actually start sizzling just like 
a regular hamburger. Except these are better than hamburgers because they're completely cholesterol and saturated fat free. So this is a much healthier whole meal and fit inside of a whole grain bun, this makes a much more nutritious meal. I'd like to leave you with these recipes and also with this food for thought. Just to keep our bodies alive, we all need clean air and water, energy and food. It's ironic that through the economic and technological systems we've developed, so many of our unnecessary wants have become readily available. And yet, simultaneously, our basic needs are becoming harder and harder to get. In commenting on this course of events, E.F. Schumacher wrote, In the excitement of his scientific and technical powers, modern man has built a system of production that ravishes nature and mutilates man. To get your copy of Kathy's new 750-page book, The Art of Dieting Without Dieting, send a check or money order for $19.95, which includes postage and handling, to Kathy's Kitchen, P.O. Box 1122, Glendale, California, 91209. If you prefer to use your MasterCard or Visa, call toll-free 1-800-331-6161. Kathy's Kitchen is a production of the Self-Sufficiency Association with partial funding provided by the makers of Bipro Protein. Next time on Space.